I'm now joined by the CEO from the Africa Private Sector Summit. Lucy, tell me, what is the Africa Private Sector Summit? Okay, Africa Private Sector Summit is a pan-African, uh, non-partisan, non-profit, uh, non-governmental organization. Uh, we were created um, based on various levels of partnerships and conversations around Africa in terms of hastening the performance of the attainment of the goals of the AFTA, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. And based on the discussions, it was realized that the achievement of the goals of AFTA could be slowed down because the private sector in Africa has challenges. Mm -hmm. And some of these challenges are constraining to investments. And all the economies of the world, the private sector has always been a very key driver in that process. So if we hope to achieve uh, objectives of the SDGs and the Agenda 2063 and after, the role of the private sector is very important. So for uh, APSS, we looked at some of the existing treaties that have already been signed by the heads of states of the African Union. And however, those treaties, most of them have not really been implemented fully. And some of those treaties are important to the private sector. So what APSS did with their partners, um, that's Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and Industry, PASI, and the African Business Council, is to extract the key uh, rights to the private sector, put it in a charter to present the key things that are very important for the private sector to thrive in Africa, to be able to contribute to the growth that is expire, aspired in terms of volume of trade, in terms of jobs, in terms of security, in terms of contribution to the development and, and all and that. And tell me, what are some of these things? Because okay. you, you, you cannot have success or growth yes. or peace or any of the things you laid out yes. without involvement, real involvement with the private sector. Exactly. So what do they need to be doing? Okay. For instance, now, many of the jurisdictions, they have regulations that are spontaneous and they change randomly. And private sector, normally the investments are long term. However, when regulations change suddenly without engagement with the private sector, that is a disincentive because it throws out all the numbers and all the projections. The other one is that the legal structures that exist, viability of the courts, to enforce contractual agreements and trade agreements and concessional arrangements to make sure that the parties comply and where there's a default that the legal system exists to enforce those things. Um, the other one which has also been spoken about is the um, transaction cost mm -hmm. in terms of currency exchange, in terms of ability to repatriate some of the proceeds of the trade. Private sector in Africa also has to deal with uh, the ports, importation, efficiency at the ports. For some of the products might be perishable goods. And if there's a lot of bureaucracy and delay at the ports, by the time the goods are cleared, they all perished. The other one is multiplicity of agencies that apply tax. Taxation is an issue. Free movement of goods and services across Africa, the visa processes are terrible. And then also logistics of goods by rail, by air, and by road, the road transportation so and all that. Let, let me just interrupt you there because you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Africa Free Trade Agreement that was now actually yes. implemented before yes. we were all talking about that yes. as some sort of savior mm -hmm. that would help. Mm -hmm. This has now been implemented, but it's not solving the very problems that you just laid out. Mm -hmm. So what do Africans need to do? What does the private sector, what does the public sector need to do yes. to overcome these obstacles right now? Exactly. So right now what the APS has and its partners have done is that we've extracted these rights, which we call them the rights for the private sector for an enabling business environment in Africa. We're trying to go around the regions to involve the labor union, the chambers of commerce, the professional associations to share these 24 rights to get validation by region, including the diaspora. Once we get that validation, we'll have a continental uh, conference summit where we will all sit and confirm that these 24 rights are basic and universal. When that is done, then the Africa Business Council will take it to the AU and get the heads of state to sign up and adopt this. When they are adopted, then they now form a basis for each country to take it in its engagement with the private sector.
Mm -hmm. So that engagement with the private sector is going to be an, uh, to influence the policies, the programs, the sectoral allocations, and all that. Then APSS will transition into an M&E arrangement, whereby every year we have a summit. Pre that summit, we have a review of the entire continent to see those who are doing very well and those who are struggling. Then those who are doing very well, we have the, the uh, Privacy to Bill of Rights Awards to recognize, encourage them, and we share their experiences at a platform and others can take. And we keep doing that on an ongoing basis. Hopefully, that would impact. Right now, we're not doing too well on SDGs. That might impact and then the success of the after with the private sector right there, creating jobs, generating revenues, and performing their roles. And it will even affect the uh, stock exchanges because as they grow, they get listed, and the capital Absolutely. market is open to foreign investment. Now, this sounds great yeah. on paper, everything that you've mm -hmm. laid out. But there are a lot of influential people that are here at this conference and here, you know, in this room. Yes. What do you need them to do right now to make this a reality? Because Africans, mm -hmm. we are hungry yes. to move forward, yes. and we don't want to wait. Yes. So what do you need the people here to do? What is your message to them today? Thank you for this beautiful question, Melissa. Right now, what we want them to do today is to go to the APSS or PASI website. PASI is Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the APSS website. We have the charter is already downloaded. Our roadmap is there, and the plans that we have for the next 12 months is there. And for those who want to be part of this also, you can contact the Secretariat. We're open to... Um, companies that want to support this journey. We're open to multilateral agencies. We're open to organizations in the private sector who have, especially those ones with multi-jurisdictional locations across Africa, their voice is very important because in their value chain, they have the SMEs and all the various levels. So we want to have that conversation to support us, to work with us, and then let's see what happens right up to the AU Heads of State Summit. And if they sign that up, then the private sector can be in the main room and well, I Be think it's fantastic that you are actually convening mm. uh, pan-African yes. private sector companies because yes. that is that in itself is a big step. And conferences like this is so important, especially mm -hmm. that trade is yes. one of the themes of yes. this conference. So what do you want to see from the Gabi conference by this time next year? What we want to see from the Gabi conference by this time next year is right now we have the global companies. We saw Google, we saw Microsoft speaking. We hope next year we'll see African mega corporates like? speaking about their situation. Okay, some examples. Okay, for instance, we see um, the 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 the. I don't want, I don't want to call anybody. Looks like I'm not promoting any particular person. <laughs> okay, okay. It's like you have so many children. I need to call somebody's name so they okay. all know themselves. You know, I'm okay. not holding brief. I'm not running an advertisement for anybody, and they're okay. all children of Africa. <laughs> so the mega corporates that have locations in many jurisdictions, especially those that have Pan-African. Africa is diverse. We have Anglophone Africa, Francophone Africa, we have Ab Arabic Africa, we have Portuguese Africa. We would like, because the reason is that the global corporates that are trying to speak in Africa, they're speaking about their challenges, but they have the integration constraints, yeah. and they have challenges of understanding what Africa needs. They want to participate, but they don't know what Africa needs, and what they think Africa needs might not be what Africa needs. Absolutely. So if we have the African mega corporates come forward and say this, I see Mr. Lakija in the room, so or they see she's a mega corporate person in Africa. So many of these African countries are the corporates that have struggled it's like the salmon that swims upstream. Mm -hmm. You know, they've gotten the muzzle, they've endured. They can come and share their experiences and speak about real situations that they're dealing with, especially if it's multi-jurisdictional. So we know that it's almost pervasive. We know the issue of power. Yeah. You know, Africa, power is a problem. And many of our um, power sources are no more, they're not modern, and we're not optimizing renewable energy wind, solar, and hydro. Most of our power sources are still linked to fossil, and some of the equipment, the infrastructure are obsolete, and the cost of replacement is so high, and many of the countries are in debt. So, right. but however, if the power sector is unbundled and open to investment, but right now most of the governments are carrying the cost. Mm -hmm. So if they open the power to investment, we open the port operations to private sector service providers. We open the health 
to private sector. We open the logistics and transport, provide the infrastructure, rail lines and everything, but allow private sector to participate. That way you get the efficiency that you need. You don't need to carry the cost because there will be foreign um, investments and local investments. And the corporates in Africa can also participate in the CSR because we have the international financial reporting standards that requires the mega corporates to report their performance, not just in financial terms, but in terms of impact on the situation. So some of these, by their works, they can adopt social programs and they're partnering with the government and they can intervene in these social issues and put their brand on it. And that is good for everybody. So Africa is unstoppable. <laughs> Africa is unstoppable. <laughs> Give me in 30 seconds, why is Africa unstoppable? Africa is unstoppable because right now we have resource constraints all over the world. Somehow, Africa is our first home as human beings. We started from Africa and by some default arrangement, nature has blessed Africa with all the resources that we need, both in the air, beneath the ground, in the minerals and everything. And as we're having lean resources around the world and we're having these challenges, it's time to speak with Africa as a partner, not subservient, but on equal terms, and her partner at the seat. And then we can see how humanity can get benefit from this beautiful treasure. I call Africa our final garden <laughs> on yeah. Earth, you know, yeah. and, and it's a beautiful continent, followed by Asia, of course. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa.